Okay guys, so this video is probably one of my most requested videos and that is talking about the Bitcoin fork. So we've been following the whole Bitcoin, I guess, storyline for the last year or so. Bitcoin has been having an issue with scalability, okay? And what I mean by scalability is increasing transactions per second and making Bitcoin faster. And also from a protocol aspect, making it scalable so more businesses can build applications on top of it and more merchants accounts can start accepting it, okay? So let me kind of paint the scenario exactly what's happening. If you're not too privy within the space itself, one may not know exactly what's going on, okay? So let's paint the picture. Right now, Bitcoin is having a technological issue, and that's not an issue with the technology itself, it's more or less a political issue. So if you remember my last video, I was talking about Ethereum versus Ethereum Classic, that one split from the original. This might be the case scenario for Bitcoin itself, but Bitcoin's a little bit different, and I explain why. So currently, nobody owns Bitcoin. It's a decentralized technology that is uh, open source that developers and miners and users and everybody who uses it uses it consensually because they choose to use it there's nobody that you can say there's a ceo cto cmo bitcoin so there's nobody to point in charge and be like okay that person's going to make the decision or those five people are the leaders of bitcoin that doesn't exist right now and it's never going to exist that's how satoshi made it's a decentralized technology uh, open source kind of like linux okay so keep that in mind nobody owns bitcoin and there's no chiefs in command of bitcoin to make the final judgment call and say this is how it should be done so currently like i mentioned there is a scalability issue with Bitcoin, making it faster, making it more user-friendly for merchants account. So there's two camps right now. There are developers in North America called Bitcoin Core. Big, uh, big company, they raise millions of dollars, they have you know, hundreds of developers working on their own solution or their own proposal to help the Bitcoin protocol to make it faster, better, and scalable. At the exact same time, you have people over in Asia doing the same thing called the Bitcoin Unlimited Protocol. No difference, they have their own variation and these guys have their own variation, okay? So there's two camps. You have Bitcoin Core here in North America and you got Bitcoin Unlimited in Asia. Both have different approaches to scaling Bitcoin. The issue is this, since nobody owns Bitcoin, since there's no chief in command, it's really difficult to say who's right because A, you got this ego side and B, you got that ego side. Remember, even though we're talking about technology, we're talking about human beings. People are attached to their own ego identity of this way is the right way, they're attached to this way, the right way, and both are arguing, bickering over like, I'm right, you're wrong, yada, 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 and we don't really get any progress. You see what I mean? It's no different than politics. Liberals, Democrats, blah, 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 okay? We're at that stage right now. We got Group A, North America, Group B in Asia, bum, 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 bumping heads and pulling, you know, dirty little political tricks and all this media mumbo jumbo, both ends. It's quite mm, standard politics, let me put it that way, okay? So you got both groups arguing and no one can really progress uh, to the next stage. See, because Bitcoin is a decentralized technology, there's different layers and there's different people involved to say we all accept this new proposal. So you have miners, you have developers, and they work together. And then obviously you have end users, so merchants and us, people who buy into Bitcoin, whether that through speculation or just as an investment or as using it from a day-to-day -day basis. So you got miners, you got big miners in Asia, which is the majority of them. You got developers in North America, which is the majority of them. And you got a small amount of developers, which is part of the Bitcoin Unlimited, which is Asia. Now for a protocol, so let's say a brand new protocol to say, yes, we want to accept it, pretty much 90 per, well, this is an arbitrary number. They just came up with this number. It's not set in stone, but what they're saying is 97% of the miners, of the developers, of everybody in the whole network has to say, yes, we agree with this protocol, let's go ahead. 97% is a very difficult number to get to, and I don't think so it's ever gonna to get to that number. So you have this camp trying to propose their idea, and that camp trying to propose their idea, and both are not getting to 97%, okay? Let's pause there. So let's now talk about what camp A is proposing and what camp B is proposing. Camp A, which is the developers here in North America, which core, they're proposing kind of side chain solutions called SegWit. So it's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a type of side chain that makes Bitcoin faster, that makes Bitcoin safer. That's their proposal. I'm not talking about technicalities here. I'm just telling you what they're proposing. Option B, which is Bitcoin Unlimited, they're actually proposing more, but uh, kind of not even a hard fork, but what they're proposing is a more dramatic uh, improvement to Bitcoin. So they want to increase the block size more than a megabyte, 
they want to transform the underlining protocol that is Bitcoin, as opposed to SegWit, Camp A, wants to add things on the side of Bitcoin. These guys, uh, Bitcoin Unlimited, want to actually change the whole Bitcoin protocol. Both, like I said before, saying I'm right, I'm right, yada, yada, yada. But, like I said, 97% that has to become consensus. And since you have all these different layers of developers and you have miners, it's never going to get there. So right now we're at a stalemate. We're, had, we're playing dirty politics right now. It's not a technology issue. It's personal gain is, issue. There's no difference between politics and this. As I mentioned before, miners are profiting. Uh, developers profit. Everybody profits. So everyone trying to look out for their own self-interest. Now, the fork. If we're looking at a fork, it may actually happen that Bitcoin at this current state that if both sides don't come to an agreement, maybe by the end of this year, you may actually see a split. So how it would look like, it would look like exactly what happened with Ethereum. So we would have the old Bitcoin, okay, Bitcoin here, then they'd have a split right here, and then you have the new Bitcoin called Bitcoin Unlimited. So regular Bitcoin would be the Bitcoin core guys, then you have the Bitcoin Unlimited. I, I suspect if this happens, prices could go as low as 200 bucks and even lower on both ends. And some say, some say that's going to be bad. I don't think so. I think this is great. This is the whole purpose of blockchain is for groups of people to come together to create their own blockchain and to create their own currency or solution to a problem. And through the consensus of users around the world, they will vote whether they see value in that or not. So if we do see a fork, I will hypothesize that it shall happen this year. I think if we don't see a fork this year, we won't see a fork for a while. So if they don't come to a consensus, which currently with the two camps bickering over their political views, I don't see that happening up to 97%, like I said. So if we don't see that this year, we will see a fork of Bitcoin. So we're gonna have now Bitcoin regular, which is currently what we're using, and Bitcoin unlimited. But what's cool about this, now both parties get what they want. Bitcoin Unlimited can go start scaling on how they want it, and the Bitcoin uh, uh, core theme of, core team over here, which will just, the Bitcoin will still be called Bitcoin because they want to keep their original name. They will scale with SegWit how they want to scale. So yes, price will drop and people will panic. Everyone's going to be selling. But I'd say it's a great time to buy when it's that low. And I actually believe price will skyrocket from, from what we see today. Uh, you know, a couple of months ago, we saw highs of, what, even 13, 1400 American. I think we see highs of 3,000, 4,000 once this hits. Uh, because people have more trust, you'll see people choose out of their own volition which side they want to go on, whether it's the Bitcoin Unlimited, or whether it's the Bitcoin Core. So, to summarize, is Bitcoin in trouble? No, it's not. It's just old politics like always. Nothing changes with human behavior. You have technology, then you have human behavior. Them combining is always issues, okay? Will a fork? I say 50% chance it may fork this year. If it doesn't, it won't fork. And if it does fork, don't worry about it. Keep your Bitcoin, I'm doubling down. So what I have in Bitcoin right now, it will split 50-50, I'll take my chances. And the best of luck to both parties and teams. I will still be using Bitcoin. I will still be paying my uh, freelancers in Bitcoin. So yeah, there you have it. That's the current situation with the Bitcoin fork. I wouldn't worry about it. Now, if you're looking to currently invest in Bitcoin, I still say invest. I think it's still a low price. I think it's great. You're not going to be making millions of dollars. People are looking for this like fear of missing out. Understand what you're investing in. Put 500 bucks in. Buy 500 bucks of Bitcoin. And if a fork does happen down the road, you got 250 in Bitcoin and 250 in Bitcoin Unlimited. That's it. Okay, that's my thoughts on the whole Bitcoin fork issue. Like always, leave me your Bitcoin slash Ethereum address below with the suggestion for the next video. And share this video and like this video. And I'll talk to you soon. Peace.